prayer brings heaven to earth. Okay, so you, dis- you, you disarm the demonic power through prayer. Prayer is so important in our lives. You know, at the healing schools and all that, and uh, at various others that, that, that I've done, you know, in teaching in dom- denominational churches and all of that, you know, I teach a lot on, on how to pray for the sick. But I think what people don't realize is what's behind that. It's a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. Okay, so people want the power, but they want to rather just command with these loud shouts, come out, come out. But uh, the person uh, is not a person of prayer. So the demon overpowers them, okay? So it's not how strong you are, friends, in this lifetime. It's your prayer life that's really going to bring about those blessings, you know, in your life. It's going to bring about the power of faith in your life, okay? So we need to be connected, um, you know, with the Lord all the time. We need to carry him along with us, you know. Even now, I'm praying for you, you know, and and things are happening in the realm of the Spirit. Uh, praise the Lord. So through prayer, we receive empowerment, and uh, through the Holy Spirit. And that is where the power is. Of course, you know what? We're not talking about power. We're actually talking about faith. Faith in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's how it comes. You know, even Paul said, and uh, so I'm speaking about the importance of prayer today. Paul even said that when you pray, you must pray without ceasing. Have a look at those two scriptures. Perhaps take it down. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 17. And all it says, that entire scripture, is pray without ceasing. And so often we have the prayer meetings, and there's an amen, and that's it. You know, And it saddens me so much that people have just cut off their prayer, where we need to keep it going, you know, keep it going, keep our prayer life active in our hearts so that we can have this 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 connection of, of walking with the Lord, not just, you know, during a Sunday uh, service, but to continually be walking with him and to, you know, you know, think about if, if a robber comes up to you and for some people they'll shout the name of Jesus, but it won't be the name of Jesus in faith. And the robber will overpower them, you know. But friends, you know what? We, ne- we don't need to fear on this earth, really. If we have a prayer life, we are so full of the Holy Spirit that we could shout the name of Jesus and they would fly out of the door. Why? Because we are with him, okay? So it's so important that we develop that prayer life with him. And just to be constantly with him is just so important friends and then the next uh, scripture is philippians 4 6 it says don't be anxious about anything okay so when we are anxious we are stepping out of the will of god okay so we don't want to be anxious okay and this is all a work in progress for all of us you know because we are in the world and there are situations that will cause us to feel anxious at times okay so it says, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition uh, with thanksgiving. Okay, do you see that? With thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Okay, so it's telling us that by prayer. So there we see the word prayer again, which is so important Okay, we shouldn't just come to the Lord when we need help. Um, you know, many people are, oh gosh, something's wrong. I need to pray now. Let's pray. Let's all get together and pray. Um, it shouldn't be like that. It should be a constant flow of prayer in our lives. Okay, we don't come before the Lord in a state of desperation. We come with a free spirit. Um, you know, we, we have that rest in him. We have that confidence that when we approach him, uh, we know that, that we present our, our p- 
petitions before him and we know that he has answered us. And even if it's not today or, or tomorrow, we know that that miracle is on its way. Hallelujah. Okay, so prayer and spiritual warfare actually eliminates anxiety in our life. You know, someone who is a, a prayerful person will have less anxiety, okay? I think people do have anxiety to certain degrees, you know, but it's so important that, friends, that we learn to put on the full armor of God uh, to protect us against the destruction of the enemy, okay? So victory over the gates of hell starts with prayer, okay? So important that. All right, so let's get on to the next scripture, and that is in Genesis 1, verses 26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Okay, so isn't that excited? We are wired for greatness. Our divine nature is that we have authority over all those creeps. <laughs> okay, uh, well, over all, over everything, friends, we have got authority. This is how God created us. Okay, He didn't create us for the devil to overpower us or overthrow us in any way, and um, he wants us to have that authority. We need to take back that authority that the devil has stolen uh, because he comes in through our thoughts and he, he makes us speak negatively so that we won't actually partake of that divine glory that he has for us. Okay, so, you know, I mean, you, you've got authority over the wind, You've got authority over the waves. But people don't believe this, okay? And as as they have thought within their heart, so they have received. And many people say, well, I don't believe that God will give me that promotion. And as they have believed, so everything is framed in this world by the way that we believe, okay? All right, and that's why I always say, I see a little crowd here, but that's not what I believe. What I believe is for something so much greater and world travel, okay? So I can see beyond, I can see beyond in the vision that God has given us. So never lose your vision, friends. Uh, God has got something so much greater for you, but don't give in to the, the negative words from the demonic, okay? God has got a plan for you to prosper and to be in health. And some people say, well, I have to live with that sickness my entire life. My mother had it. My, my you know, it went down. Grandma had it <laughs> and grandma's mother had it, you know, so I will get it too. Uh, how often have we spoken uh, sickness into being and it has actually come upon us, where Jesus says, by, well, you know, the word says, by his stripes, you were healed, okay, and God is not a man that he should lie, has he not spoken it, will it not come to pass, so these promises are not automatic, friends, they are fulfilled by us acting upon the word, believing the word, and putting it into action by faith in the name of Jesus Christ. All right. So I know the scripture is a bit long, so perhaps you um, can look at it in your Bibles. And uh, it's Ephesians 6, verses 12 to 18. I'm going to read through it. And uh, we're going to pay attention to that that scripture uh, further down near the bottom. And it says, For our struggle uh, is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, 
and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Okay, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of grace. In addition to this, take up the shield of faith um, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And here's the key, friends. You know, we've done all these things. We've put on the, the breastplate of righteousness. And, um, you know, we, we're doing everything that we possibly can. We've got the full armor on and the belt of truth. And it says to pray in the Spirit. Okay. Uh, all right. To pray in the Spirit on all occasions and with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all of God's people. Do you see that? Um, Jesus was taking authority over the wind, over the waves. He was casting out demons. Friends, you must take dominion and authority really over your situation through prayer. And um, by prayer, we are are moved into new realms of power and authority. And that comes through prayer, okay? And uh, that's why if we are to boast, we are to boast in the Lord, okay? Because it's all his doing. It's not our doing. We don't have that power. Uh, That power uh, within us is the Holy Spirit. So all the glory and all the praise belongs unto him. So he's a jealous God, okay? And uh, it's important that we realize that our hope, our trust, and our surrender, everything that we have is to him, okay? So we must learn to decree, we must learn to declare and believe and act upon God's word. And you know that scripture, it says to pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Some people say to me, well, that's just praying in tongues. Part of it is praying in tongues. But you can pray with the spirit. The Bible says you can pray with the spirit and you can pray with the understanding also. So, you know, it says all kinds of prayers and requests. Pray in the Spirit, but also pray with the understanding, you know. And sometimes it's good to just pray in the Spirit because we don't know how to pray, but the Holy Spirit gives that utterance to us. Okay, so all kinds of prayers and requests. And make sure that those prayers and requests are lining up with the Word of God. Okay, so, the, you know, the devil is after your power and your authority. And uh, he knows who you are in Christ. He understands who you are and whose you are. And, um, you know, he enters through our weaknesses. And he's looking for a weak avenue, possibly fear or anxiety, to even just come in, you know. And he's a thief. And uh, he'll attack you because of your fears and The thing is that he knows what you can do in Christ, okay? So he tries to get hold of our weaknesses to bring us down and to really tell you that you will never achieve your goal. Um, He tries to get you to make empty promises to others and not to come through with it, friends. It's so important, really, friends, that we begin to stand on the Word of God. Don't believe the lies of the enemies, um, of the enemy, of the enemies. Well, there are quite a few around, okay? So um, you have the power of God residing within you. And uh, when God says yes, no man 
can say no. So when you understand that you have this power and this authority over all the works of the enemy in your home, in your workplace, uh, uh, perhaps you're a teacher in your school, or wherever it is in your country, you have power and authority in your country. Uh, Yes, in the name of Jesus, all things are possible. You can have power and authority over your area where you live. In the name of Jesus, uh, you can have power and authority over your finances and uh, you are well on your way to victory in Christ. Okay, so in Matthew 4, Jesus has come out of the wilderness having fasted and he's prayed and uh, he's promoted into this new realm of prayer. And the devil is now negotiating with him. You remember that, that, that story of, um, you know, he's, he's now offering him something. Uh, the, the devil's coming up to Jesus and he's offering him something that's actually far more inferior, really, uh, to what he already has. And, uh, you know, when you have been promoted, uh, the devil will come and try and negotiate things with you. And he'll try and uh, give you some kind of worldly thing. Okay, all right. So, friends, when that happens, uh, just just understand that we are to resist the devil and he will flee. Um, okay, we don't want what the devil has to offer us. What God has to offer us is so much greater, really, than we can ever imagine. No eye has seen No ear has heard the great things that he has for us. So why would we want to receive anything from the devil? But today many people speak that way, they act that way, and so these things come upon them. So just remember, friends, Jesus is your provider. Stand firm in your faith, and no matter what, submit yourselves to God. He has a scripture Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Okay, remember God is not a man that he would lie. If he says that, and people say, well, I've been submitting, I've been, I've been resisting the devil, and he hasn't been fleeing. Well, then the problem is, is that you haven't been submitting to God, because now we're calling God a liar, and he is not. Okay. So, friends, that's why I always say to people, we always need to look inwardly, okay? Uh, So important that. So, prayer gives you the ability to know God's nature uh, is on the inside of you. You are a child of God, and you're created for so much more than what you're living at right now. So, you know, if you don't have faith, there's no power So just remember in in Mark, Jesus said that this kind would only be possible, um, would not be possible, but only by prayer and fasting. And uh, that's why often I say to people when they're coming along, do a two or a three day fast. If you really are truly wanting to see that victory in your life, you know, the Bible does say that some of these spirits only come out by prayer and fasting. And of course, that is my life. I do fasting and I pray, okay. But, you know, it cannot be one-sided, okay. So we need to make sure that we are all operating on the Word of God, okay. So praise the Lord. The Bible says in Luke 10, verses 19 to 20, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. So God has given you power over all of the enemy, and it should not take you by surprise, really, that the spirits are subject to you, okay? It's normal kingdom living, okay? When we live in the word of God, it's normal kingdom 
living to operate the same way as Jesus did. And he said, even greater works shall you do, okay, because he goes to be with the Father. So he's really blessed us as children, but we need to to step into those blessings. We need to understand who we are and whose we are and what authority we have and that we truly can do all things um, you know, just remember that promised land, you know, friends, don't be standing on the gate to your promised land, um, but not acting upon the word so you can't enter. Uh, make sure that you are there believing God for your victory. And you here today for deliverance and for healing. Let that be a heart decision as well. Don't come up and say, well, I, I hope I'll be healed because you've already negated your healing, okay? Hope is not faith, okay? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. We believe, we know it is done, okay? So we create an atmosphere of faith and excitement. You know, it always amazes me sometimes I see people come in looking very sad, and it grieves me really, because they need faith to receive their healing. And um, there, there should be an excitement like the lady with the issue of blood. You know, a, a raw, aggressive faith, believing, knowing, just knowing that all things are possible with God. Okay. Anyway, so we say to you today, according to your faith, let it be done unto you. So, hallelujah. So, friends, be sure to fill up your uh, your life with scriptures. You know, we can learn the scriptures, we can declare it, but when you're declaring it out there, believe it in your heart, okay? You know, uh, and I know that it's a process for many people. You know, God supplies all my needs, and some people are like, you're right, <laughs> you know? Uh, you're right, how can we say that we're going through a rough time, but God is not a man that he should lie. Okay, so he does. Okay, so obedience is required. All right, obedience to the word of God. And that's why we've all got a part to play, you know, in this walk of faith with the Lord, trusting him uh, completely. And that's what it really all boils down to, friends, is trust. You know, do we trust him? Do we fully trust him? Uh, that, that he will come through with what he said, okay? And uh, we need to believe it and, and know that we created for so much more than what we are actually living in and walking in at the moment, okay? So, friends, thank you for, for listening. And I just want to... Um, I just want to, uh, before we get into the deliverance and the testimony time, I just want to place it upon your heart uh, to forgive those who have hurt you. Okay. So, you know, the Bible says, if you do not forgive your neighbor, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you. Forgiveness brings healing. So think of that person who hurt you, friends, because you can't hold a grudge against someone and expect God to touch you, uh, you know, in healing, healing you. Release them. You know, the Bible says vengeance is mine. God says vengeance is mine. So will you just leave it to God? Let God sort out whatever that problem is, friends, and release that person right now. There's some people that say, well, I can just never forgive them for what they did to me. And uh, it's sad because the healing doesn't seem to flow that way. Um, so although it's hard, people have hurt us in the past, um, all of us, everybody's on a walk here, friends. There have been bosses, uh, there have been uh, friends and, and colleagues that, that, that you work with. And, and, you know, various people that you'll meet throughout the day, perhaps even your next door neighbor that you need to forgive. Will you right now from your heart just say, Father, you, you know what? It, it's not worth it to hold on to that pain because that pain is causing sickness 
arthritis and all those things in your body. You want to release that. And we find so often when people forgive, um, it's amazing how stomach problems and uh, arthritis and all these pains, you know, uh, that are really rooted in, in, in sin, really, uh, are released. Okay. So there's no condemnation. We are all in Christ. And uh, we thank God for his word. We come before him um, with a, a pure heart to receive from him today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.